Sing to the rock, sing to the tree, sing to the firefly lighting up the sky. Sing, sing to the sea. Hello, I'm Mary Whelan, and this is the song, a show that presents songwriters, composers, and lyricists, and their original songs. And today, I am very pleased to present Joe Gravelin. In the small hours of the morning Under a round and sleepy early July moon I watch the lightning I watch the lightning split the sky And in that ocular moment Illuminate the walls and ceilings in my room And the healthy young crops Planted in the fields outside below The endless yellows and greens Of this old New England river valley town Brought me to a smile And I felt so thankful for my eyes I heard the thunder snap and roll Percussed off the hills out to the west Tearing asunder The molecular structure in my chest Well I reeled down and under And when I had recovered with a grin I felt inclined again To be so grateful for my ears I smelled the sweet scent of the ozone And the smoky trace of a distant campfire Rekindling fond memories Blowing on the coals of old but warm desires I seized that moment And drew it deep inside my chest For it was the very best And I knew I had been blessed Sensed a kindred shared experience Somewhere out there with the ancient ones Whose lives played out in abundance On these rich and fertile river valley grounds For a hundred generations They were here before the coming of my time This night belonged to them Long before I ever made it mine So with the dampness in my eye And a touch of melancholy sublime I took a trip in time Journey in my
into the gentle sleeping darkness I reached out for the hand of someone I love Well I lingered for a moment And raised my eyes to the sky above I whispered to the shadows Thank you for this night And I spoke to my creator Thank you for this life For this life Thank you for this life In the small hours of the morning Under a round and sleepy early July moon I watch the lightning split the sky I watch the lightning I watch the lightning split the sky I watch the lightning I watch the lightning split the sky Saw the raven steal the moon Spellbound by the waters With the rhinestone view Fireflies love in her eyes And a mood just right for two Yeah, sometimes We all get blue They told him Roses are red But he said my is blue Soon she'll be happy with somebody new Can my poetry pull me through Yeah, sometimes we all get blue Sometimes we all get blue Sometime it'll happen to you We can't always be sitting on top of the world Sometimes we all get But his story wasn't true He lived his life But left no room for the Me and you Time ran out and you were gone Lord, now there's nothing I can do Yes, yeah, sometimes We all get blue Sometimes we all get blue Sometime it'll happen to you We won't always be sitting on top of the world Sometimes we all get blue Sometimes we all get blue Sometimes
Sometimes we forget Very nice. I like both songs, but I particularly like that one. That's, that's very nice, yeah. And uh, now, we first met last November at the Beaver, Beaver Moon, Moon <laughs> Gathering. You want to tell people what a Beaver Moon Gathering is? Well, first, we, it's important to understand what the Beaver Moon was. <laughs> mm -hmm. We live our lives under roofs and ceilings these days, you know, and in front of televisions and such, but there was a time for close to 12,000 years the people lived their lives under the sky. And, um, and the seasons talked to them through the celestial movements and the changes of the uh, environment and the earth. And in the case of the beaver moon, uh, it was the time for uh, getting out on the ice before the snow uh, closed it in and uh, trapping the beavers for the furs needed to keep uh, a family warm for the winter. And uh, so that was a demarcation in time of uh, let's get our act together and, and take care of uh, getting some clothes made for the cold weather, the beaver moon. Um, so that's the beaver moon gathering that we had uh, last November. It was a celebration of those uh, traditional practices and, um, and um, a chance to... Um, to come together and, and look at uh, indigenous arts and crafts and uh, talk a little history. And that was, that's what the basis of the Beaver Moon Gathering mm -hmm. in, uh, at the Great Falls Center in Montague was uh, in November. Yeah, it was a wonderful event. It was a nice yeah. event, yeah. yeah. And it was sponsored by the Nolan Beaker Project. The Nolan Beaker right? Project, that's correct, yeah. And you want to tell people a little bit about what the Nolan Beaker Project, you're the president, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. For a while. Yeah. Like anything in life, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Nolan Beaker Project is a, is a group of um, mixed blood indigenous heritage individuals who, um, who realize that we have uh, an absolutely um, amazing uh, history in western Massachusetts here that hasn't particularly been paid attention to or, or preserved over the years, indigenous history 12,000 years back. We inherited uh, last February the uh, Wissateniwag village site, which is, has been uh, cited as being the oldest continually habitated village site on the whole of the Connecticut River, and the artifacts off of that site date back to over 12,000 years. Um, that was also the site of the, um, the Great Falls Massacre that occurred May 19th in 1676, and uh, that particular event impacted, uh, it resonated out across the whole of North America, although it took 200 years for the indigenous people out west to start to feel the pain that the indigenous people in the northeast felt. But that one particular event absolutely turned history. Because if the, um, if the ind individuals, the uh, indigenous people that were at the Great Falls, um, refugees from King Philip's War, if they had been able to harvest the fish and plant, plant the fields at uh, Squaw and, and the north end of Pecumtuck, to bring their food sources together, um, and the tribes could have kept their strength up. They had the English just about back into the boats heading back to Europe. But that event, through the switch, it, it just like walking up and throwing a light switch, that was the end of 12,000 years worth of tradition, history, ritual. It ceased that morning at mm -hmm. 4.45 in the morning, and it never came back again. So we celebrate that event in a, in a form that we can uh, use it as an opportunity to educate people about the um, antiquities that we live with every day. We drive by and we don't know or recognize, but we have an absolutely incredibly rich history in this area that goes back that long. It goes back to Lake Hitchcock and beyond. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what Nolan Beaker takes mm -hmm. care of. We, we have an accountability to, um, to monitor the uh, preservation of uh, these ancient sites, uh, burial grounds, and um, historic, um, historically significant resources. Great, wonderful work that you're doing. Yeah, it's yeah. rewarding. Yeah. 
Now, if people want to find out more about the work that you do, it's what is there a website they can check out? Um, NolanBeekerProject.org. Okay. And uh, it gets updated pretty regularly. We keep people in the loop mm -hmm. as to our challenges and our and our need for help, volunteer and otherwise, you know. And uh, we're going to get back out on the Wissatiniwak Village um, in the spring. We're going to do a botanal survey out there. We're going to start clearing out the old trails. The trails mm -hmm. were created, like I said, over 12,000 years ago. They're mm -hmm. still intact. Uh, that land was so uh, rugged out in that area that um, it didn't, um, it wasn't exposed to the kind of uh, clear cutting and um, and uh, um, impacts that uh, that most of the really nice farmland around the area was over the centuries. So uh, it's still intact. It's uh, mm -hmm. an ancient, ancient system that's in place out there, and uh, we're going to get out there and bring it bring it back to life by getting people a chance to move across the land and feel the energy and uh, and get educated a little bit. Now, if people want to contact you either about the Nolan Beaker project or about your music, where's the best way they can? They can contact me by uh, dropping me a line at Old Gray Wolf, G R A Y, Old Gray Wolf at Verizon.net. Okay, great. And uh, there's also a way to get on the webpage at uh, NolanBeekProject.org. Great. Well, why don't you do another song and okay. then we'll talk some more. <coughs>
Sure. Now, you were a road musician for over 20 years, right? Yeah, well over 20 years. Well over 20 years, and you shared the stage with some pretty famous people like Albert King, Chuck uh, Berry. Yeah. Chuck Berry had yeah. threw me off the stage once. He threw you <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> You're cutting into my set. <laughs> that was Tupelo, Mississippi. Oh. Tupelo uh, Elvis <laughs> Festival out there. He was he was a character. Uh -huh. There's some stories to tell about him. Yeah, uh, Johnny uh -huh. Winters, who was one of my heroes, uh, uh -huh. as far as a guitar player goes, a performer, I should say. Uh -huh. um, a lot of folks, yeah. We, we were on the road with... Um, um, a, bo a band called Captain Swing, mm -hmm. and we were swapping, you know, they were up a week before us, we'd come the week after, you know, we did that for years. They ended up changing their name to The Cars. <clears throat> then they opened for us at a big concert, and, and it was the first time they'd done all their original stuff, and, and they got fired from all their jobs, because mm -hmm. they went all original. Hmm. Everybody said, well, that, they were doing Lou Reed stuff, you know, they were doing mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, David Bowie. And then they just dropped it, you know, and they did all originals, and, and we just fell in love with them, and bam, they took off like a bottle rocket. Uh -huh. So we were working with the cars. Um, mm -hmm. We did a lot of gigs with um, Aerosmith long before they broke out of Vermont. Everybody thinks they're from Boston, but they're from Sunapee, New Hampshire. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. that's part of the story, so. Yeah. Now, so a lot of time, yeah. So do you have any advice for younger musicians who maybe are about to set out on the road? Well, there's, it's a different world out there now. Mm -hmm. They're better informed. Uh, I think they're better disciplined. Uh, they have better access to educational processes. Um, the biggest thing is uh, keep, keep your egos in check. Um, get a... a Get a compass heading on where you really want to go. Try to discover who you are, what your sound is, and believe in yourself and, and support each other. If you're in a band, you've got to support each other. Um, and, uh, and write, write, write a lot of original stuff. I mean, the world needs new music, and, uh, mm -hmm. and these folks have to fill that slot, you know. And I think they can do it. But um, don't get distracted. There's a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. You know, back in our day, it was a lot of drugs and alcohol and all that mm -hmm. stuff, but um, I think young folks are a lot smarter than that now. If they want to become serious musicians, mm -hmm. um, you have to really put your nose to the grindstone. And, uh, and the biggest thing is to create a sound. Don't worry about being the best at anything. Just create mm -hmm. a sound, I think, that's unique. And uh, that would be part of my advice. Yeah, great. Now, you talked about you should write a lot. Now, did you write with other people in the band or at all? Or? Yeah, we wrote. We, we kept pitching our stuff to New York City and kept getting denied, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is funny because we used to have folks like uh, the band Boston come out and check out our gigs to, to steal some of our riffs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's just the way the, the business goes, you know. They liked us in France, but they, but they didn't have the infrastructure that the United States had, oh. so... Um, but yeah, we did a lot of writing. We had to write on uh -huh. the road in, in the motel rooms and go in early into the uh -huh. clubs that we were set up into and stuff and now try to put material together. Did you spend a lot of time touring in places like France? And no, no, we, no, we didn't. We never wanted to. We were on a 50, 50 week a year circuit, four to five uh -huh. nights a week, and, and we all were trying to just make ends meet, you know. Uh -huh. And to go to France, we'd have, we'd have lost our shirt. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. Uh -huh. But they like the material. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> now, um, if people were interested in getting any of your music, is there it available to be downloaded or online? Some or of the anything? some of the music uh, from the from the band I was on the road the longest with, which was was the band called Renegade. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to Facebook and see me in my younger days, you know, uh -huh. and uh, and catch a lot of the material we were writing. So it's on f Facebook as Renegade? Yeah. Okay. Renegade. Oh, now there's cool. a bunch of Renegades out there, but uh -huh. you'll recognize me. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> so people can find that yeah. on Facebook. Great. And uh, now, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your process of songwriting? And what, do you write the music and the lyrics at the same time or at diff different times? Well, so how does it I'll give you a couple you? examples. The... Um, the song Lightning Split the Sky um, happened in 2005 at 2 o'clock in the morning when a just amazing 
a beautiful storm moved through the valley in Northfield. And I live right o overlooking 300 acres of the Great Meadows, you know, right by the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. And uh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> That's a spirit. And um, so uh, I was just so moved by the energy of, of that event that I stood in the window and watched it. And um, then I immediately went downstairs and, uh, and wrote the poem that became the inspiration for the song. So that in that case, the lyrics were written first, and they had to be modified for the, for the tempo of the piece of music, and they were modified at that. But other times, I'll be driving down the road, and, and I'll try to keep a, a, a pad with me in the, in the truck, and I've learned to write without looking at the pad. I just, you know, when, when, a, when inspiration comes, it comes on the edge of a knife blade, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, it, and it doesn't stay there very long. And you can fall off to the left or the mm -hmm. right, and then it's gone. It's just gone. Right. So um, I usually will write a few lyrics, and then I'll write a, a footnote to remind me of, of a certain energy or a certain piece of uh, something to pull me back into, to pull my mind back into that place that I can recall what that original inspiration was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I used to have a little micro cassette recorder in the glove compartment yeah that's but then right. i never almost never went back well, to listen to them well i tell you i call i call up my office phone sometimes with my cell phone oh, in the truck oh, really? and i sing into it oh that's cool so when i get back home i have it captured on the tape machine <laughs> that works it works it's not very high quality but it works yeah. well why don't you uh give do a couple of more songs for me On this 
incredible star across the floor Says I miss you The picture on their nightstand Brings them tears His friends I'll say Seem so lost without her And has for all these years I suppose, I suppose There'll be one more sight of moon To pass tonight Good night. 